Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Doomsday Clock, issue number eight. Guys, this is like glue you to the seat, keep you riveted and just emotionally enraptured. First page to last page, man. This comic book, this, this comic book didn't feel like it was put together. It felt like it was choreographed and directed. That's what this issue felt like. Damn it, let me get into who made this book, man. So, all the way on the back, Jeff Johns is the writer, Gary Frank is the illustrator, Brad Anderson is on colors, Rob Lay on letters, uh, Back Matter Detail, Amy Brockaway, Met Metcalf, Metcalf, I guess, um, Gary Frank and Brad Anderson did the cover and the variant cover, Whoo! and uh, Watchmen originally, of course, created by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, uh, yeah, so, oh my god, so... From beginning, man, from beginning practically to the end, of course, we get, you know, a little bit of the cat. I don't know why the cat's such a big deal on the front cover, but it's still a gorgeous cover. I kind of want to see this cat versus Rage Kitty, just for the sake of conversation. Bring it on. Red Lantern. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Anyway, um, what Oz, Ozymandias is in the beginning and the end of this, but just like in the shadows. He's looking on, and he's got some kind of devilish thing going on, and we don't know exactly what it is, but we are seeing the results unfolding right in front of our eyes. So uh, this is a very different place than what I'm used to seeing these characters in. Like, you know, they, they act a little bit different, but not so different. Um, what do you call it? This um, I'm also realizing this actually takes place about a year from now which is fairly interesting. Uh, eight months from now, this issue. So anyway, we have, um, oh, I didn't even realize this at first, the Daily Planet has a break-in at the White House. Somebody broke into the White House. I'm sure that has something to do with something later on. Just this is, um, like, Jeff Johns isn't going to write something in that, you know, that important in the, the beginning of the comic book where he, he puts down attack in the White House without it actually coming back to haunt us later on, to haunt somebody. Somebody broke in. We're going to find out what's up with that. Or was it actually earlier? Honestly, if I forget, then I forgot. And I'm going to get into that in a moment. But either way, uh, we get, you know, like some su uh, superfluous stuff in the beginning. You know, uh, Lois Lane... Uh, orders out some freshly squeezed orange juice, gets Kool-Aid back. Oh, but that, that's unforgivable. And that's that's criminal action right there. Just talking about somebody going to her desk. Uh-uh. Switching out freshly squeezed for some Kool-Aid? Yo, that's at least three to five mandatory minimum. So um, Firestorm, the big deal is that Firestorm is in Moscow. All right? The Russians have put on this thing, <laughs> all right, where they, um, oh, God, and, and I'm not a fan of what a lot of countries do in the world, but this actually does sound like the current administration of Moscow, where this uh, the 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 metahumans are a thing. Most of them are in the United States, but there are some around the world. And Moscow has decided, the government has decided, listen, Every single kid, controversially or not, has to be tested for the metahuman gene. Because if you got the metahuman gene, we need to recruit you into our military. Just, it is what it is. And let's be realistic, it probably wouldn't be very different from what would happen here in the States either, right? Um, either way, <laughs> this, is, this is actually what's happening, and I get it. I get it, and I'm feeling this comic book, man. This feels a lot like Frank Miller. This also feels a lot like... Um, Frank Miller versus the real world. You know what I'm saying? That that's what this issue is. This what yeah, this issue at the very least, that's what it's feeling like. So Firestorm is there, like, you know, this isn't right, you know, this isn't cool. But of course it's it's young Ronnie. He's young, he's dumb, he's just kind of an idiot. So he's out there, he look, he's unbelievably powerful, but always jumping in head first, thinking that nobody's gonna be more powerful than you. Well, they got some metahumans, a lot of them straight out of some jail or not, you know? And um, what do you call it? There's this main dude named Poser, Posar, or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. I guess, I'm imagining it's a Russian name. And we might find out later on that he is somebody specific, somebody important at some point or another. But for right now, we don't know what his actual identity is. And he's just like, listen, I'm taking charge. Uh, I'm taking this guy in. And this is, you know, this is unacceptable. We're taking in Firestorm. You're coming to prison. We're done with this. Something crazy happens. Firestorm kind of does like a Nova burst, all right? And all of a sudden, boom, a whole bunch of people are turned to glass. 
citizens are turned to glass. He has no idea what to do with this. He's got to get the heck out of Dodge as quickly as he possibly can. He grabs one of the people, one uh, actually a kid. He grabs the the uh, one of the kids that were turned into glass, flies away. Superman goes on the look for this cat. He's like, nah, this is unacceptable. You're going to have to turn yourself in. We get you got to face justice, bud, and I'm going to make you if I need to. Um, there is a very totalitarian idea of Superman, and in this issue, we get that. Like, we finally got some serious Superman in this issue, and this is like the worst of Superman. This is the, you know, this is like the bully gone right, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? That You know, there, there's a lot of people who always talk about, oh, yeah, man, I was a bully to the bullies. I don't see how that actually helps anything. You're giving them their own medicine. You're fighting fire with fire. Ask a firefighter how that would work. You know what I'm saying? If they went in with, with napalm, all right, to, to put out a burning house... How do you think that would work out? None of that nonsense works out. And it's one of those logical fallacies that people just accept as, as the norm. Superman here is of the, the mindset that I can't be beaten. So I'm going to do what I want to do. Uh, he does have jurisdiction in many countries. All right? He's got citizenship in many countries. And he's allowed to kind of go where he wants for the most part. But... When he goes after Firestorm, he could tell a Firestorm didn't mean what he'd done. And through the, uh, with his, like he does still inspire hope, Superman does in this issue. And he says, I believe that you could fix these kids, you know, these people, starting with this kid. And he does. He actually brings the boy back to life. That right there, of course, of course, is more than enough for Superman. He's like, you can make right what you did wrong. And maybe, just maybe, we can try and work this out. But um, Superman is always of the opinion that I'm here so nothing can go wrong. But this is, this is realistically, it's no different than uh, Firestorm marching in, talking about, I'm all powerful, I can do what I want. Good luck with that. How'd that work out for you? Didn't work out great at all. The situation escalates in multiple ways. People who don't want to listen to reason. People who are just too extremist in their in their mindsets. And unfortunately, those are the kind of people that we elect into office. I don't understand how that happens, but somehow we think that it's strength to, to not want to change your mind, to not be able to learn something, right? And I see so much, like I said, of the real world in this issue, man. This is so solid. So, of course, the administration in, um, in Moscow doesn't want to listen to Supes once, he re once they realize that he's not just going to say, oh, yeah, I'm on your side. All right, because, you know, like this is the idea. When you're so sure you're right, when you're so damn certain that you're right. If someone gives the slightest, kind, and, and like to, to bring this down to, to an earthly sense, you know what I'm saying? If I have a, an opinion on a comic book and somebody's got a completely different idea of a comic book, there are a lot of people who don't come to look at different reviews thinking they're going to get a different opinion. They're looking for people to solidify their own opinion. If I don't like this comic book, I'm going to come here and see how this guy doesn't like the comic book. Because how could anybody possibly like the comic book? And you give an opinion and, and you back it up with, with your thoughts and your experiences and your worldview and your own perception of things, your own observation of things. And they just, you're an idiot. You're stupid. I don't know how you could like this. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, these kinds of simple-minded idiots are no different than the administrations that we elect. Um, and I know how Russia's, you know, electorate was completely screwed up in, in the most recent elections and all that. And I, and I get it, but still, still, <laughs> it's, it's like the old saying, um... The humans uh, elect lizards. There are two lizards running for office, and one of the you know lizards says that he's uh, that you can't possibly vote for the other lizard because then the lizards will be in charge. So vote for me instead. And the people they keep on electing lizards to rule over them. <laughs> it's like, well, why don't they stop electing the lizards? Well, because then the wrong lizard might get in. Oh, it's 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 so mind mind rattling. But in this particular case, that's exactly what happens. We've got somebody who's in charge of 
the the entire like the other world superpower and all of the nukes and this huge army and yet he's no different than some idiot who comes to my site looking for me to just regurgitate exactly what's in his head oh it's so mind numbing it's so mind numbing and like i said it's so realistic so things of course escalate completely out of control I also want you to pay attention. There's a couple of, there's like four newspaper articles in the back of the book. It's really not even articles. There's almost nothing extra to read. And I'm glad, I'm really glad for that. I'm really glad that Jeff Johns isn't doing that whole thing where it's like, okay, here's four pages of stuff. And this one little article, this one little sentence is going to be important later on, but not really, not really. There's just four newspaper art, uh, headlines in this and two halves of an article which may or may not actually be important or not. It doesn't matter. The actual important thing on the um, these four newspaper articles is actually the, ti uh, the dates. Not just the, the dates, but the days specifically because this goes over the course of two days. But more than that, look at the times on each one of these. The final one is the evening edition. So when this stuff happens and this stuff is reported by the next day, uh, by the next evening, Superman has gone missing some way, somehow. Now, now I'm glued. You have my attention now. Guys, I do not change my opinion in any way, shape, or form about the, the issues that I had with the previous issues, all right? Uh, the previous two, maybe three issues, I forget, have actually been really good. This issue was damn solid. A lot of those issues before, though, were just so boring. I was hesitant to even... I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not even going to read these because I'm just going to say screw it. And I swear to God, the only reason why I continued reading this against my better judgment is because I'm like, it's Jeff freaking Johns. The, it's Jeff Johns. Like, the intrinsic argument that... It's Jeff Johns. <laughs> it's got to be good. It can't not be good. Well, it got good. It wasn't good before, but it's good now. Oh, we good. We good. Now might actually be a good time to go back and start rereading re -reading those things. The problem is we're still going to be once every two months for this. So uh, as much as it hurts, I'm still thinking this might be, you know, good in trade. But if you have been reading so far, there is not just a glimmer of hope on the horizon, there's an effing horizon, you know what I'm saying? And the sun is coming up and you've got a great view. So like, I'm right there with you, man. This is a really, really good issue. I loved the intrigue in this. I loved the political tension in this. I loved the posturing in this. I love that you knew you've only got but so much that you get to say. I love the idea that Batman was screaming at Superman the entire time. You effing idiot, shut up. Don't take a side. Don't take a side. I would get nothing but likes, I'm sure, if I just sat there and said, Yes, so I read this comic, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and um, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Or, you know, I probably wouldn't get as many people looking at the videos to be like, yeah, this guy's boring as hell. You know what I'm saying? I do give my emotions. I do give my reasons for liking what I like and disliking what I dislike. But the problem is that once you pick a side, the extremist-minded people, and I think that's the reason why Batman was telling Superman to shut up. He's like, Superman... You're dealing with an extremist in Putin. Shut up. Don't take a side. But Superman, of course, bullheaded to the very end. And when the whole world in your small corner, but, it, but in your observation, it's the entire world, just goes bat crap crazy. And you're like, I can't super speed my way out of this. I can't muscle my way out of this. There's too much going on, and everybody just start losing control. Damn. So, um, I can't wait to see what Ozymandias' role is in this. I can't wait to see how Superman's going to get his dumb butt out of this. The face-off that he had with Black Adam was as perfect as I would expect it to be. Here's this, oh, God. I, oh, my God. Where this comic book could go, this doesn't have to end at 12 issues, man. This don't have to end at 12 issues. 
this is amazing. The way that these characters are being portrayed right now. Oh my God. <laughs> this is sick. I'm loving this. This is a great, great comic book right now. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.